Baptist in Uganda. That sounds exciting. Here you go. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Brooks Washington. I, um, this is my first time here. Uh, I am a partner at a firm called Roja, um, and Roja is an investment firm. Uh, and we, or I, started uh, a data center company, uh, a data center platform, actually, across East Africa uh, called First Brick Holdings. And we're building uh, a number of co-located carrier neutral data centers across East Africa. Um, our first one uh, is in Uganda, and it's called Raxio. Um, I think there should be slides. So yeah, so our first one uh, is in Uganda. Uh, it's called Raxio. It is the first carrier neutral co-located tier three uh, data center in Uganda, um, and we're very excited about it. Um, so I'm going to walk you through a little bit about the Ugandan market, talk a little bit about Raxio specifically, uh, and also a little bit about our plans uh, a bit more broadly. You know, as background on Uganda, I mean, we can I'll talk while the slides are coming up. Um, so today, Uganda uh, is still uh, pretty nascent in ICT uh, growth space. It's continuing to grow. It's growing very quickly. There's a lot of really exciting activity. Uh, but as of today, uh, there is no uh, carrier neutral data center, uh, sorry, carrier neutral independent uh, tier three data center in the country. There are a number of smaller data centers, um, either that are not certified or that are uh, affiliated with a carrier or uh, of some sort or some other kind of organization. But if you look at true kind of global standards, uh, there's nothing that uh, really hits it quite yet. If we go to the next slide would be great thanks um you know so today you know as i said you know there are a number of isps who are offering co-location uh, as well i think that to call these data centers would probably be overstating things a little bit these are rooms in the back of an office um, that they are using for for co-location uh, the government getting some cloud uh, some co-location uh, also effectively and kind of enhanced server rooms uh, for mostly for their own uh, for their own use, um, but uh, for the public sector, um, but also more broadly. The related to that um, is that today in Uganda there is one IXP. Uh, it is affiliated with the government, uh, basically sponsored by the Ugandan Communications Commission. Um, but it's been struggling. There have been a number of issues that have come up, uh, especially over the last few months. Uh, the down, you know, the significant downtime, uh, up to hours a day. Um, and that's really hampering the growth uh, of the industry uh, as a whole. So in this context, we see you know, a really exciting opportunity to build a new co-located carrier neutral data center, much similar to what you have here, or what you have in other places on the continent, but that today is not yet uh, present uh, in Uganda. We can go to the next slide. Oh, I guess I can. This you know, kind of goes through some of the, the key points uh, that we've already discussed. You know, in general, data usage is going up significantly. Um, that's both uh, with local customers and accessing global content. You know, as banks uh, and other companies are getting more sophisticated, uh, there is a higher need uh, for data storage um, and increasingly uh, actually requirement uh, around the kind of storage uh, that it, the banks are expected to have, uh, that even in Uganda, that. Um, content producers are expected to have. For example, media companies are expected to keep uh, months uh, of all the content that they produce in storage that is accessible for the government should they want to see it. Um, demand for content uh, is going up significantly, uh, and the government is really moving much more towards an e-services model with e-services platforms. Um, the government has built, you know, kind of a small, a couple of small data centers for their use, but this is really we seeing catalyzing a lot of growth across the market and across the space um, for uh, data creation uh, and data usage and getting more people used to um, kind of using these sorts of norms. Uh, the next slide, please. So I, I assume that most people in this room are relatively familiar with the argument uh, and the value proposition um, for a carrier and cloud neutral data center. Um, I, I, I can talk through these quickly, but it's very similar as in other markets. It's just that we are now being, bringing the first one uh, into Uganda. You know, there's strategic disaster recovery, which is the core of our business. You know, most banks, most telcos, most ISPs in Uganda obviously already have a primary location, um, but there's very little secondary, there are very few secondary locations at all. And where they do exist, again, they're kind of a back room 
the average bank has uh, its disaster recovery in the back room of a branch that is just slightly outside of the CBD. Um, and that is how they do disaster recovery with very little um, actual ability to, 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 to continue operations. You know, if you look at us, you know, we have high security, we have redundant uh, connectivity, and I'll talk more about the specifics of, of our facility. Um, co-location, you know, we're able to you basically get great economies of scale because we use our tech teams to support. Um, there's operation uh, opportunities to kind of meet there on site with a large boardroom, customer areas, meet me rooms, um, et cetera. Um, cross connections are obviously a huge opportunity um, and make a lot of sense, you know, for all of these customers who are interested in connecting to each other, it's much easier to run a cable, you know, a meter across the room than, you know, five kilometers across town. Um, there's remote support uh, um, and there's an IXP for building inside our site. Um, the final thing, you know, just to, to emphasize that we're not only carrier neutral, but we're also cloud neutral. And we've made that very explicit decision. Um, and we think that that's what's uh, important uh, for our customers and to be able to provide the best service for our customers. We are not interested in competing with our customers to provide a cloud operation. We are trying to attract as many cloud players as possible into our facility um, to allow for customers to be able to make their own choices and have redundancy. Uh, we can go to the next slide and talk a little bit more about us uh, specifically. So we are currently in construction. Um, you might not be able to tell on the map, uh, but we're about 15 kilometers outside of uh, downtown Kampala. We're in an industrial park called Namambe. Uh, which falls under the Ugandan Investment Authority. Um, they are charged with catalyzing the growth of uh, investments and, 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 and economic growth in, uh, in Uganda. Uh, they're a great supporter, uh, and so we're you know, really happy to be there. Um, what's really important, though, is that we are along the Kampala-Jinja um, Highway. And Jinja is the source of the Nile and of, of, of much farther east. Um, but that is where almost all of the, of the fiber cables in Uganda run. Um, basically, because if you kind of imagine you're going from Mombasa uh, through th to Kampala, they basically run along that road. Uh, and so that gives us a fantastic connectivity because all of the providers are already right there, uh, just at our doorstep, about between a kilometer and 500 meters away. Um, we are, if we go, sorry, go to the next slide, uh, please. This is uh, the design of our data center. Uh, in a minute, you will see um, a bit more about where we are today. Um, but we've started construction. We expect to finish construction and be up and running by January. We are, uh, as you can see here, you know, the facility has total capacity uh, of about 1.5 megawatts, is that's what we'll grow into, which will be, say, four to 500 racks. We are starting with 540 kilowatts. Um, which is obviously a, you know, a bit on the small side, but we'll grow into that. So we're starting with 540 kilowatts, uh, 150 racks. We're starting with 10 carriers who are, uh, provide, who are coming uh, into our data center, which is just about all of the carriers in Uganda. Um, we are, you know, I've, I've already mentioned, they were, you know, carrier neutral, cloud neutral. We are a tier three, we'll, we are, or will be, we're in the process of being a tier three uh, certified uh, data center. Um, and which is really the first one uh, in Uganda, uh, as I've mentioned. You know, what does this mean? Uh, this means uh, that any item or plant or services basically can be serviced um, and removed or there can be maintenance on it without any sort of disruption in service. So it's a complete N plus one system, um, which gives us full redundancy um, and you know, kind of full uh, uptime. Uh, we have a state of the art, you know, our, our energy efficiency. We've spent a lot of time on this, both because it makes sense for us as a business, but also because increasingly it's important for our customers. Um, it's extraordinarily energy efficient. Um, we have a power uh, utilization effectiveness ratio uh, of about 1.3, which is uh, really uh, kind of leading. We have, uh, we're using some state of the art efficient cooling systems. Um, and then for about half of the year, we actually work in a compressor free cooling mode. And we're able to do that because of the climate uh, and because of the structure, which really provides energy savings uh, for customers uh, as well as uh, is obviously kind of good, good for us. Uh, you know, because of the operating environment that we are in, we're realistic. Uh, we have a full diesel backup we can run indefinitely. Um, and we have UPSs that ensure that there's no downtime, even if the grid uh, goes down. We have two connections to the grid, uh, both through uh, in, into separate substations. Um, but again, things happen. Uh, and so we do have a full diesel redundancy uh, to ensure that we, we hit our uptime requirements. Uh, the average IT load that we're looking at per rack 
uh, is between two and six kilowatts, um, which is about you know, standard you know, for the industry. We can actually have the capacity to go up to a 21 uh, for a high density rack. Uh, in general, we don't expect to see that too much, but we do have that capacity. Um, you know, these are typical racks. They have lockable front uh, and rear doors. Um, they can be, we are building private caged areas for larger customers, for customers who want enhanced security. Um, and you know, we have kind of all the other typical uh, setups uh, of, a, of a data center um, that you would see anywhere else in the world uh, and bring it to our, into our market. So here you can see, um, you know, this is the, the front view. Basically you enter, there are seven points of security uh, between the road uh, and between and the actual IT equipment. Uh, you can see a few of them here, the front gate, uh, the, the entryway, you know, we do actually don't, in this presentation, have an internal schematic, but you can kind of get a sense of how it goes, the parking lot in front, et cetera. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to go to the next slide. Um, but on the next, but, uh, okay, great. Uh, so on the next slide, you can see at the back, you can see the compressors, you know, you can see it's you know, quite a, uh, an advanced system, 10 compressors. Um, the generators are there as well. Um, you know, it's all, again, state of the art, but state of the art that's applied for our environment which is you know, obviously a bit more complex um, from an energy perspective um, and uh, energy security perspective than you would see elsewhere in the world. Uh, so this is the back uh, of the data center. Uh, if we go continue, uh, go to the next one. This is a, a cutaway view of the top. Um, and here you can see you know, this, is, um, this is the, uh, the, the main data hall uh, with uh, the, the the, where, where the data center effectively is. Again, this is the, the energy and compressors as we discussed. Um, in the front, you can see kind of the offices and meeting rooms and, and all of those sorts of things. So as we start to think about the impacts um, that this is going to have, you know, we think that this is going to have uh, a tremendous impact uh, on the enterprise market because what it's going to do uh, is going to decrease the total cost of ownership um, and decrease the cost as a barrier uh, to the growth of this enterprise market and to the growth and sophistication uh, of the ICT sector. Um, and so we see this as catalyzing uh, kind of a really in, uh, rapid growth uh, in, the ITC, in the ICT space uh, in Uganda by redu reducing the total cost of ownership, um, improving operational effectiveness and efficiency, uh, and then you know, in doing both of those things, freeing up capital to be invested into things that are more productive uh, and that also further fuel growth. Can we go to the next slide, please? You know, what we've done is we've done a, a pretty detailed analysis, you know, because, again, because this is the first colo effectively in Uganda, um, we've done a, a pretty detailed analysis to show how customers can save um, by coming with us versus building their own. Um, and, you know, so we, we view those in two ways, you know, the, the investments case is just pretty obvious. You know, the core cooling, uh, IT um, and, and other infrastructure uh, has to be in a data center regardless. And there's a, you know, kind of a minimum scale that you need to achieve. For us, we're able to achieve economies of scale and spread that across many more customers, which just means that the upfront investment for customers uh, to get this level of service, uh, this standard and this level of service is significantly lower, um, which again, frees up uh, big capital upfront. From an operating cost perspective, um, you know, again, it's much, much lower. We have economies of scale in our operations, um, and we have, uh, and that's both in energy and people, um, and you know, kind of really all aspects of the business. Uh, and so, rather than having to uh, staff and manage, rather than having to uh, do the maintenance and the insurance to to run the power, um, you know, we take all of that ourselves, um, and customers can just pay us a flat rate, which ends up being, you know, significantly cheaper on an ongoing cost uh, basis and you know, the total cost of ownership of any given um, kind of uh, IT space uh, is significantly lower if they come with us versus if they stay in the market or if, if they do it themselves. What's also important is that because of the high cost of ownership of doing a, data, a proper data center themselves, you know, many customers just, you know, again, don't kind of meet these global standards. And so we really think that by bringing this best in class facility into Uganda, We'll be introducing you know, a new opportunity uh, for uh, increased growth and sophistication uh, of the ICT space uh, in Uganda. If we go to the next slide. So a key thing that we are also working on um, is we are building an IXP inside uh, of Raxio. 
Today in Uganda, um, as you may or may not be aware, there's only one, uh, there's only one IXP, UIXP, bless you. Um, there are 27 directly connected networks. Um, it's a mix, you know, it's carriers, ISPs, some CDNs. Um, you know, traffic has gr grown dramatically, and you can see, you know, here in, you know, 2014, um, it was, you know, kind of less than one gigabyte per second. You know, today uh, it's close between seven and eight, um, which we'll come to a benchmark in a minute. Is incredibly low, um, but is you know a massive low, a, a massive amount of growth. The IXP has struggled in sometimes to um, to 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 to, comp, uh, to 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 manage that level of growth, uh, and there are significant service issues. There's downtime up to six, 12 hours at a time. Uh, the entire XP has been down. Um, there are, are some questions from the government about exactly how this um, is going to continue to be run. Um, we don't really understand exactly what's happening, but the government has indicated that they do not like the way that it's currently being run uh, and would like to um, be more, let's call it, involved. Um, there are space constraints. Um, and they uh, are not able to grow. Um, and, you know, they're, they're really just in a bit of an unsustainable situation. And again, it is the only IXP in Uganda. And so this is really hampering the growth uh, of the overall internet space uh, in Uganda. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Oh, and sorry, this is currently located in uh, the Ugandan Communications Commission. It is in uh, literally under a stairway uh, in the Ugandan Communications Commission. Uh, if we could go to the next uh, slide. So we are building an IXP uh, within our data center. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty basic, straightforward. Uh, we, are, we are doing this as a not-for-profit. We are doing this as a service for our customers. Uh, we are not trying to make money from this. Um, you know, there will be a direct peering from the existing UIXP and Raxio. We're not trying to take them over. We're just trying to complement uh, what, they, what they're providing. Uh, and that really allows our tenants to connect directly to the UIXP at a minimal cost. And that creates some redundancy some added capacity uh, and more room for growth in the entire space. You know, our IXP uh, is neutral. You know, we're, we're not favoring anybody. Again, as I mentioned, we are a not-for-profit, or it is a non-for-profit. Uh, we have multilateral peering, um, so there's the ability to selectively peer uh, with other networks uh, of their choice. Uh, we're not forcing anybody to do anything, uh, and you can choose between. Um, the business model is pretty simple. There are no port fees uh, at all, uh, but then we do charge cross-connects between uh, the, uh, the IXP uh, and their rack within Raxio. Um, there's, uh, and then there's significant CDN consolidation, um, and that just kind of increases the ability, the, the accessibility of local content and makes it possible to um, here. Uh, if we go to the next page, uh, you know, Terraco, which I'm sure you're, you're all very familiar with, you know, is really an inspiration to us uh, and, and a model for us on many levels. Uh, and they have quite a successful IXP within, uh, within their data center. You know, if you look here, um, you know, at peak, uh, at peak, they are just about 700 gigabytes per second. Um, and so, you know, if you, if you start to think about that, that means that within Terraco, uh, at peak, that they're about 100 times the peak uh, of the country of Uganda. Um, and that just shows the scope that the market has to grow, but also the scope that, you know, kind of the potential for an IXP located within a data center, um, which is enormous and which we see as really just, again, only a win-win for our customers, for the market as a whole. Um, and, and then also just, you know, provides uh, access. If we go to the next, uh, the next slide, this just set, tells a little bit about uh, where we are in our process. You know, um, so Roja, uh, which is an investment firm, invested uh, the capital uh, necessary to get this off the ground uh, starting uh, last year. We started construction uh, here in March uh, of this year. Um, construction is, uh, is ongoing right now. Uh, there's a, one of the next slides has, um, has, a, has a page. Um, the building will be more or less complete uh, in September, October, uh, which is when the installation of the MEP equipment starts. Um, and that should be more or less complete uh, in December, uh, which is when testing will, will, will happen, uh, and then we will launch uh, in January, or properly open operations uh, in January. If we next slide. When the next slide comes up, you will see it is a picture 
the of the current status. You know, right now, you know, there are about 100 people working on site doing various, or 50 to 100 people were on site doing various bits of construction. Um, you can see we're right across uh, from uh, from a large uh, teaching and conference facility, um, and you know, they are moving pretty quickly uh, to to finish um, and making and making good time and broadly keeping the timeline. So we are on track uh, for our January launch. Um, just a quick word about first brick holdings. So as I said, you know, this Raxio is the first uh, in, a, uh, in a broad network of, uh, of data centers. Uh, the first is, uh, is Raxio, which will be up and running in January. The second will be, uh, also this year we'll launch in Ethiopia and Rwanda, uh, and then next year we'll launch uh, elsewhere in East Africa. Um, and that's, uh, that's just about it. If there are any questions, I will be around, but otherwise, uh, thanks for your time and thanks for listening.